actually sorry would be there's a actually <laughs> one more what? don't what which every photographer say please don't put any kind of filters on the photos we have edited and given you <gasps> yeah that's the worst really Chris? Yeah. don't and tell me they touch him yeah <sighs> they yeah. touch him yeah oh my god it comes to editing requests i've said no i've also done things which i say no now because there was a point where i was not established or it where i wanted to earn money and then sometimes after the shoot clients tell a hey, do that I, i'm i'm not denying that i've not done it yeah, of course i've done it mm. but these days i i'm confident enough to say no and mostly with editings i say this is the point i can go and i can't go beyond that he takes photos of the best he makes them feel their best he addresses them while well, he stays dressed like the rest <laughs> a face behind the camera only a mother would love well i'm not sure about that <laughs> he's got away with it thus far but nothing's going to stop him to get the best shot now please help me welcome the man with a trigger finger finger nathan is shooting how are you mate Thank you. How are you? Thanks <laughs> for having me here. Oh, thank you so much. It's great for ha- uh, great having you here. Um, thank you. Man, we were just talking off camera and I'm just thinking how do I segue all the conversations we spoke about? But how about we start with my first question? I'll see if I can um segue what we spoke about. How? Yes. How does one take photos of seven semi-naked people? Or well, let's say semi-naked bodies? and keep composure a straight face and are you really struggling with those photos uh good question that's one question which i get from all of my friends who are yes. not into photography yes and who have not been in my set yes so, because you're you're predominantly telling put your leg here move here bend over here. even though it comes into the shot you've got to get them into the shot so yes. how do you do it so during the shoot Honestly if I say I'm really stressed <laughs> because I'm really bothered about what the light is looking like oh, right. what my camera settings are oh. am I showing them properly if it's not too bad or vulgar or anything especially most of the shoots clothes are off clothes yes, are off of course and, and also, also they're getting dressed in front of you yes and I get this <laughs> obligation of uh, making sure their muscle is looking all right all the cuts are visible and etc so I'm s- walking around looking at the best angles and wow, lights and everything so wow. i'm really in my brain it's it's running i'm cooking so you <laughs> you the only struggle you have is getting it right yes i'm i'm mostly thinking fun. that and especially with lights and also another thing which i always keep telling is if it's a portrait photo shoot i find it easier because I just have to make them look good with the face. What was that shoot? What, what kind of shoot? A, a portrait, a, a, a regular portrait, one. A portrait, right. So they are clothed, clothed. That's easy. And it's easier for me. But then if it's a lady or a man or whosoever it is with bodybuilding or glamour, I have to make sure they look good facially and also body-wise. Because wow, so you're even looking at the muscles. I, I didn't yeah. realize that the angle, the... You know, it's funny what it reminds me of. Um, on, a, on a late talk show... Um I don't know if it was LeBron jo- LeBron or whoever it was a basketballer and the host said to the basketballer it's a big match the crowd is cheering and you've walked out and let's say he said Jennifer Lopez or That's, Selma Hayek yes. or someone is in the crowd and looks at you and winks are you like thinking is that going to distract you and he goes I don't even know they're there Exactly. like he's just team he's just fans win the match yes he's doing I've, it for I've the fans that. Yeah. yeah so they don't get so you don't get distracted either you're like game game face yeah. game on especially it's not cheap when they're paying someone especially of course uh just for an hour or hour and a half mm. so i've got that extra obligation of mm. doing the right thing for the money they paid yeah and it's obviously getting photo shoot done is not something which you always do mm-hmm. so sometimes there are people who save up for that mm. and obviously bodybuilding you've got a lot of expenses nutrition uh, your training 
your uh, pausing classes, everything. Well, no one's got much money left, let me tell you. So yeah. to put you into the mix is <laughs> they're actually more broke. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever, just fallen for their beauty, and slightly during the shoot developed a crush? Like, have you gone no. and gone? She's hot. Oh my god, I'm so. Loud. Not crush, but. Obviously, <laughs> when I edit the photos, yes. or once I've edited... Oh, so this is after the fact? Uh, I see the photos and I'm like, oh, wow, that's a, that's a really good one. Sometimes it looks like almost like a poster once, oh. which you see in magazines and stuff. I'm like, oh. and yeah, I've got this funny face, which I try and avoid during the photo shoot. When I what take a good like? photo... Yeah, when you take a good photo. Yeah, when I take a good photo, I'm like... <laughs> I say, ooh. <laughs> and after say first 10 15 minutes my client know that i've got a good shot when i make that face all I'm right like, oh all yeah. right well okay so you, you you don't even fall you don't even get you don't develop like when i say a crush what i'm saying is it's like out of the blue the chemistry is right and you go god i'm really enjoying this person uh because chris very... falls in love with them all <laughs> <laughs> i mean no, i mean doesn't. quite natural but mostly <laughs> like i said when I'm already preoccupied with all these things. You don't have time for all that. Yeah. Very professional. I'll get a hand you to it. It's, it's good that we, um, um, it's good that we're finding that out because I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I couldn't be able to compose myself. But then again, I'm pretty good when it's game face and game time. But I suppose, yeah, you, you, the responsibility is, and I think with photos, and I know Chris does, does events as well, is it's their special moment. You can't re. Yes. It's hard to relive it it's, and get them back and get the timing right and the booking. The whole thing is yes. uh, w to work the magic. And you're exactly. No, I hear you, man. So, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, no. I always used to think this before I started shooting. All right. Like, oh, how are they gonna shoot this? What happens behind the scene and everything? You, as a teenager, obviously, you'll start yeah, yeah, thinking all those things. And then when I reach to that position where I'm shooting all this stuff, I'm like, I exactly don't know what happens. Wow, <laughs> so, I tell you what, well, your friends must uh, think you're uh, the man. You're the man. Yeah, I've got a lot of colleagues who are like, hey, do you want some assistance to just <laughs> hold the light or do something? I was going to ask the same question at the end of this podcast, but I guess... The, the list is long. Yeah, the the waiting list is long. I'll, okay, I'll get a number. <laughs> um, I saw you did a photo, sorry, you did some photos with a guy called Sed. Um, S-A-I-D. Yes. And um, it's funny enough, I reached out to him and we are talking to maybe get him on the podcast. And I did mention we're doing a podcast with you and I know his brother is the late Aziz. Yes. How did you end up getting this guy? That's not a funny story. Yeah, please do. Because, look, I, a lot of things are free. And a lot of things are paid for and sometimes we pay for yeah. things but how tell us a story around that because to be honest i don't know these guys i'm not trying to be rude but everyone's talking about them and now i know they're important because yeah. the most important thing is when people talk to you about them not that you see them online yes. so they're big in america they're big everywhere so tell us yeah how'd you get said so yeah i've always seen their videos in youtube and everything i was not rigorously following them mm. but i knew them Mm. Uh, Bodhi, his late brother and him. Mm. So there was this one day, honestly, I took a break from my work, my day job, and I was in Coles buying some steak or something. And then I bumped into him. So <clears throat> I saw him and I'm like, oh, so I've seen your videos. Are you that guy? He said, yeah, probably. I'm like, oh, nice. And then I spoke to him and I'm not that kind of guy who is very extrovert, yeah. not comfortable to just walk in or bump into someone and talk everything. And I said, hi, and then I left. And the moment I walked out, I'm like, oh shit, I've, I've missed the chance. I should have asked him if I can work with him or do something. Mm. And I went back, he had gone. I thought, okay, let me just send him a DM. And I kind of 90% knew that he's not gonna reply because he's got some 100K plus, yeah. or some followers and yeah. he's very active there. Mm -hmm. So even for me, I get, some amount of DMs and I sometimes struggle to keep mm. up. So mm. I could kind of imagine he would be mm. really busy, but he replied, I am like, hey, I'm kind of pinching myself that I didn't ask you that if we could have worked together. And then it's like, yeah, l let's shoot. That was it. And then uh, he was also getting ready for his competition. So he was in his, not peak week, but he was almost there. So. Well, it's a great shot, but I've reached out to him because of you. 
and he replied to us last night and we're talking to him now and it'll be great to have him on so we'll see how we go um he from my experience he's a really lovely guy oh i'm sure high confidence but until i met him from internet what i always mm. had was he was arrogant and things like that's another thing of uh, instagram internet and everything you really won't know how that person is until and unless you know that person in person yeah 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 no so, no look um i get miss the perception of me is completely wrong all the time and i'm sure the perception of you i probably i probably look vicious and you look kind and you're probably the vicious one and i'm kind at the end of you the day know. that's what i'm saying is we never know by the look of anyone hey guys steve here from muscle talks i just want to say thank you for you guys being here thank you for watching this podcast what i'd really love is for you guys to hit the subscribe button why hit the subscribe button it'll just allow us to have a bigger reach allow us to go get a bigger audience and also bring you the best of the best here our goal here is to not only get our local people but also international and eventually and hopefully and will be bringing the olympians to this station muscle talks podcast so please hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so every time our podcast is launched weekly that you get notified and you can sit back and enjoy this thanks guys but um yeah yeah i, I like i said and i suppose um because i wanted to segue into social media and some of the people on there we were talking and i might as well bring it up we're talking that at the moment are you seeing it like i'm seeing it and again i'm not a professional and i'm not going to claim to be a professional but i'm seeing a lot of sexualization happening i know that we've got a platform called only fans yep. i've never been on there uh, i'm sure i can make some money just putting my feet on there for some reason but and the fact that chris is clipped i'm sure we can do something with that now i'm sure maybe him clipping i don't know but and that's clipping his legs by the way not his testicles but then again i think he does those too but having said that do you what do you what do you what do you um do you think we're not policing ourselves well do you think that people are putting on not only the faces and the movements and the photos but do you think it's just becoming very sexualized and we, and they're believing that's the success when I've come to terms with sexualization you, you you're going to go broke what do you think so uh i i honestly have short people who have got uh, of uh, accounts mm. so uh oh, i will forget you've taken yeah, shots yeah, yeah I've taken uh, and shots. i'm sure so, that that's that's the business yes yeah. so when i see it as um, i see it as another business and also yes no one really know to what extent it is penetrated in everyone's mind or yeah. how things are going but well, then I, I, and i sp- sorry to interrupt and i guess being that you said you've taken photos for that content you know a bit more about behind the scenes of let's say only fans i I don't have an account. I choose not to go there in case I get addicted to it, yeah. which I I don't have an addictive personality, but m- my my faith in myself at the moment is to stay on the not the straight just the straight and narrow is where I'm going and my success is in real life. I don't need to look at yeah. people's photos it's, and movies. It's it's funny you said you don't have an account and it's even more funny that I've never seen how it looks like in the site. I've never okay. opened the site. But I think it was that one phase during covid and everything everything just blasted and it mm. went out of hand. Yeah. And to be honest it's almost got to a point it's normalized in a way. Don't you think that now our like the kids the, aspect it, but the I, Instagram yeah. side of things now it's just it's not interesting anymore like it, it, if I want to ha- it's m- even with i'm not just saying girls but and guys and again i you know look at me but it's taken away the mystery it's like really exploiting you know the i don't know like i said is it showing off your butt like you might, like it's yeah. it's kind of unnecessary and actually in real life it's not real because we, i've i've seen and there's with all of us even guys there's loose fat loose yes. cellulite there's a looseness going on yes and i was the other thing i was going to say sorry and i'm talking a lot is i always wonder why people use filters no meaning even friends and you're going to see them in 10 minutes in real life but they filtered and you go i'm going to see you in real life why are you filtering now and i feel like 
I prefer you to know if I'm ugly online, I stand a chance in real life. But if I'm that good looking online, oh my God, I hope I live up to what the filters have done. That's that's another thing when sometimes I get uh, clients who do booking mm. and at least at this point I was talking to Chris, I've reached to a point, not that I'm saying an established photographer, but at this point I can say no to people who are not aligned with my values. Good. So there have been clients who just tell me that, okay, Photoshop my apps and things like that. Yeah. So I've got a fine line. Yeah. Obviously, as a photographer, I'll make you look better, not manipulating your body. I won't slap a filter or something. Obviously, sometimes I have to, I mean, most of the times I edit, but when we say edit, it's touch-ups, right? Just like makeup. Mm. So filters, again, uh, when someone asks me, like, can you do these Photoshop stuff? What I say is, even if I do, next day you're still going out in public you're going to your gym you're going to see your friends and they know it's fake what's the point yeah i I, yeah i like i said to you i i think what do you reckon chris or i prefer to be ugly on camera and in real life someone go you're not bad looking in real life wouldn't you prefer to be good looking in real life uh yeah well you are ripped you are ripped and good looking i mean i didn't choose being Still trying to. <laughs> we're gonna get somewhere with Chris one day. Honestly, we'll get yeah, him he, he can jump in. He could jump. Yeah, we'll get him on. We'll get him on in a second. Um, looking at your socials and the photos, each have an individual uniqueness. How do you make that happen? And 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 how does the unison collaboration of ideas happen with your clients? So, not everybody like said, is doing an up, um, um, a leg raise crunch. Yes. And some are leaning against a fountain. Yes. And some are sitting down doing up their shoelaces. How, how do you put all that together to make it individualized and not everybody put doing the shoelaces? Yeah, so I was talking to Chris before we met. So when I speak to a client before booking, I speak a lot. Sometimes mm. I don't know if I annoy them. Yeah. But I make sure that they tell me what they're looking for. So already once I've, I know what exactly mm-hmm. they want, mm-hmm. I do a lot of homework. Yeah. I write down poses and everything. I sometimes even draw wow. where I'll keep yeah. the flash and everything. I do a lot of homework. Because See, isn't that funny? That's really your hourly charge that they don't understand. They yeah. think it's the camera clicking away. Yeah. But the hourly charge is exactly. everything. Exactly. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Thank you. So mostly when I rock up Anything for the shoot... Anything to do shoot, about Chris is always a, yes. an applaud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about what I'm thinking. It's like just one big debate. Yeah. But you're gone. So my phone normally have notes for every client they yes. booked. So I mostly write down the poses and everything. I keep referring that. And obviously there are a lot of things which happen during the shoot. I see some angles. I say, okay, let's try this. But... Another thing I was telling Chris was, if they have told me this is the style they want, I mostly think backwards. I think how the photo will look after the edit. So sometimes my photos, raw photos, might look really weird mm. because that's the base I want so that I can edit and look at, make it look some the way I wanted it mm. to look. Mm. So these things happen and sometimes, mostly you eventually reach to a point where things started start happening automatically yeah you will you have made it like i said i looked and i was trying to find similarities and you've done a very good job in giving each client their own individual look and genre so i have to applaud you on that thank you sometimes i i've i mean these days i've because you can play safe if you want yeah i can play safe yeah and that being said these days i've been trying to get out of my comfort zone which means Mm. My photos were never that, like, really bright, vibrant. Mm. I never had that in my fitness portfolio. So these days, I've been trying to tap into that looks also. So it's almost like getting out of comfort zone, but it's all experimenting and see how it goes. Look, um, I know we hear it on podcasts about, it's the uncomfortable that makes us successful, but, um, you know, it's not. So tell us about Nathin. Origins, family, growing up. And what did you, well, let's be serious here, you're Indian. Yeah. What did your family want you to be? Good, good <laughs> you know? question. So, yeah. so where I, are you from? I'm from India, yep. a state called Kerala. Yep. It's the southernmost part of India. Yep. 
uh, grew up there. I mostly did my studies in a boarding school, which I'll give a lot of credit to studying in boarding school because that... Can I just ask, is yeah. it boarding school because your parents were affluent, meaning they were doing very well in life and uh, they could send you there or was it because they... Not exactly. Was, okay. it's, it's so they worked funny. hard. did they work hard for you to go there? Yes, yeah. they did. And Good they, on. I mean, they always did. It's funny because initially when I was studying my primary school, my mom also was a teacher there. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so even before my exam results are out she knew the results and i kind of felt it really weird because she i mean brown kids and indian parents obviously you get bashed back back then it was bashed, very very normal well <laughs> i think the europeans initiated it yeah you know, and you just made it and took it to another level so anyway so <laughs> Say Monday, I'm getting dancer sheets. I'll start getting bashing from right from the <laughs> Friday because she knew the scores. <laughs> so in other words, if you didn't get bashed, you got good scores. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which so, was pretty much a, a mark away from 100%. I mean, that's how... The... I, I was not that great. <laughs> no. Okay. So anyway, so that and then also I was kind of like, yeah, let me... I always, since I was a kid, I always want to explore that unknown part. So she asked me, do you want to go to this boarding school and you'll have to stay there obviously away from parents and you won't get to see us and all I'm like yeah okay and because of me my cousin had to come with me he he hated me for that obviously he didn't he didn't like that oh. so but yeah uh bought up in a boarding school but even the, even the test of your parents not being with you i don't know i think i'd said I my kids are older but I, I would send them to a boarding school, but I guess you feel as a parent, you're not being responsible for them. But look, whatever it is, it is. So, all right, you went to boarding school. Um, your mom worked there. Um, you were happy to go there. You felt it was a bit of an adventure too at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, obviously away from parents and everything. And you don't, there's, there's a lot of uh, things which, where you get tested, obviously. Yeah. Uh, me being, I think, the skinniest kid. Mm. Obviously, uh, I mean, so there's, there's a good good so part. There, so there's to, bullying. Hap- there, there's a good part. So the to bullying it also. happens even in India, everywhere. in school, everywhere. Yeah, yeah I'm I mean, gonna say it's it's, for, it's not a Western culture thing that we, we we just don't call it bullying. We don't uh, use that term, mm. but eventually it's all the same. Yeah. But then it it makes you tough in a way for the outer world, I guess. I mean, yeah. obviously there are limits and where you shouldn't cross and everything. But yeah. back then these things were not talked about, so. You, if you're skinny, then you have to be strong in other aspects. Like I had to really good with, be good with talking. Okay. Like, uh, yeah. So you would think twice mm. before you come and hit me yeah, because yeah. I'll I'll talk all those bullshit. Wow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or sometimes be good in other aspects like uh, cultural, so things like that. So you can get away with things like that. Mm. And um, all right. So you went to boarding school. Um, what did you want to be? Uh, well, you, did you dream as a kid? Okay. I was telling Chris I wanted to have a reception lounge when I was so, 15. Uh, there, there were three options for me uh, when I almost reached high school. I wanted to either obviously be a techie guy. I was really good in coding back then. But that required mathematics, which I sucked. So oh, right, that right. option was out uh, already. Yeah. And then the next option was either I wanted to be a chef or a photographer. Do you think it's funny that I'm going to tell you something about maths. Do you think you, you realize you get better at maths as you get older because you realize it, there is a mathematical equation to everything, like in relation to even your business, your camera lens, the size of the camera lens, the click of it and the pause of it and everything's timing by yes. mathematics in some ways. I'm good in those kind of mathematics. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Unless and until I've given a question, question sheet to answer and use the formulas. Okay. But then, yeah. then. Oh, so you wanted to be, so you didn't want to be a doctor, a lawyer, politician? I, I exactly knew that was not my. All cup right, of so. All right, so. It. Possibly you, you something about photography still captures you as a it young child, a young boy, yeah. and also. Why, why is cooking. And, I, 
uh, cooking and maybe Uber driving. <laughs> Why is cooking like so the go-to? And I'll tell you, hear me out first. Because yeah. I had a shop and I had Nepalese. I had an Indian, Bangladesh. I went to Bangladesh, by the way, for three days. Um, why, why is cooking like your escape? And sometimes, unfortunately, you feel that's where you go. Because even people that come from India, some are doctors, some are accountants. Because your, your certification doesn't matter here, they just want you to go to school here. What is it about cooking that, like, it... it because you 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 do it, some some do it regrettably, but there's a little bit of passion to it. Tell me about yeah. that. So, again, if I talk from the point of view of uh, being here, Australia, there are two types of chefs who migrate. One, like me, who have worked in hotels properly, and then yes, of we obviously chefs are mostly in the skill list to get visa. Yes, of course. So we migrate that way. Yes. There are another set of people who a come cook. in and there learn. There are cooks. There are cooks. <laughs> uh, still not cooks, but they yeah. would come here and learn cooking mm. and then be cooks. And because Australia is uh, always looking for chefs or cooks to work, there's always job vacancies. That's why you see a lot of people end up in the chefs or cooks job. Mm. But again, that being said, it is very different like sometimes when i say oh, i used to be a chef uh it they're like ah oh, everyone here is a chef i know so i have to i have to tell them see i where i was cooking or where i was making food you would end up paying almost 600 dollars for a night's meal so tell us about that let's go there so, so what so what kind of a chef were you uh i was into italian fine dining yes and it was also mixed with molecular gastronomy so Molecular gastronomy is all those fancy stuff you see in internet, yeah, like yeah. the bubbles, smokes, yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And it was early back in 2010 to 11, where things were not even very popular in internet. Yeah, we didn't have a master chef then, or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but there was movement happening, and especially with hospitality. W were food. you doing it here or in um, no, in, in India? India, India yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's also surprising that India. Middle Eastern countries, Asian countries, when it comes to food, they are so advanced than Australia. Yeah, they? It's very diverse here. You go out to street, you'll pretty much find every cuisine, but it's all basic. Other stuffs, you go to Dubai or somewhere, the food you get there is like, you won't even understand what's happening around you. Like yeah. cafes, bars and everything. Yeah. So, well, I, I think it's everything. I, I went to Bangladesh for a few days and... I, I went with someone that was connected there. So I actually had a driver. Not that we were driving anything spectacular. It was just a Subaru. But he had a, um, what do you call it? He had a horn because the, yeah. the, the oh, horn yeah. is everything. The horn was that I was kind of like a diplomat or I was in politics. So even the police would move over for us. But what I was my story is that the buildings... Eco-friendly buildings outdo what we've got here. Like when they, when those countries, even though they seem there's poverty there, when they build an eco-friendly building, yeah, it's beyond it's beyond belief the the environmentally friendly building they build. And it's probably like your the food you're saying. Everything is not it's exhausted to the point of we deliver what we say. Yeah, we're here. We, I think we want to be, but we're waiting. We always wait. We or we don't want to safe. lead. We huh? play it safe. We play safe here, yeah. don't we? Yeah. I mean, uh, still, uh, when it comes to Indian food, like I always joke around, it's not just butter chicken. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we not... have reached to a point where we are getting past butter chicken. Yes. But we are still there. It's probably like Greek food too. I yeah. Tell you, I tell you, like, like, tell me, um, what do you think? What's a Greek food? If I like, of course, I'm going to say to you butter chicken or masala, yeah. whatever, whatever. What do you think of Greek food? Yeah, I mean, now that I've conditioned to Australian standards, yeah, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So when you say Greek food, it's mostly feta cheese and hummus, and which is all even mixed. It's not even sometimes Greek. It's the Middle Eastern mix. Or, or tarama, tarama masalata, yeah. or um, olives. But if I told you, because you're a chef, if I told you my mom cooked a dish, right? Listen to this: yeah. pork cooked in the oven 
with a Dijon type sauce with celery and the celery melts I've, I've never heard of that, that that's honestly, a great dish yeah. there you go would you think of that pork with celery yeah. in the oven on a Dijon style my instant sauce. reaction I don't know if it's yeah. caught in the camera but when you said pork I'm like wow yeah <laughs> and, and then I said to you celery yeah them two cook together where would you think and delicious that's what I'm saying like it, that's what I'm saying Greek food isn't um L- lamb on the bar like sh- um, yes. shish kebabs yes. of lakia, whatever it's called but very interesting okay so chefing why australia what were you, what were you what were your humble beginnings here so why did you choose australia how did when you got here what did you do okay so australia was never in my books honestly okay. my friends moved here he's almost like my brother so he moved here and he was like hey listen try and get the visa and come here it's better and honestly sometimes growing up you have few countries you wanted to go and visit and everything right mm. australia was never in my books so he said and i'm like okay i'll go and give it a try came here and started off working in mcg i came to melbourne first oh, okay, yeah. so i worked there as a chef or a cook and then eventually moved here to sydney and then switched to um, teaching in uh, cookery college but and that's what you do now don't you that, as well that's what, uh, that's my full time job so the shift from chefing to teaching was purely because of uh, boredom honestly yep. like i said it was not exciting me anymore mm. chicken schnitzels were <laughs> i mean and chips was, chicken schnitzels i mean chips. they were anyone can fry that so yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like okay let me choose another job which pays me well and also i can now finally get back to what my passion was uh, other than cooking obviously photography photography so you, you you enjoy teaching people the the right way to cook but i'm i'm assuming not schnitzel it's also there it's also there schnitzel's there, there. Schnitzel's yeah. there. yeah yeah it's but it's the basic stuff so anything which is taught in uh, cookery or commercial cookery is mostly french based yeah it's it's mixed up but anything in mostly everything is french everything's french why why is french such an influence they are the one who started all these hierarchies and terms and terminologies so oh, we still use those i did not know that well that's good to know i didn't know that the french did that and so when did the shift um um uh, i'm just uh, w- one second we've talked about the places you've worked well, yeah. the mcg what's been your favorite place to work for in australia uh i would i would now say sydney because and what, what place what place would you say oh, i've worked at this restaurant or i've worked at oh i've i've now worked uh a lot in sydney as a chef so i have to work a bit because i'm teaching i have to uh, as per rule i have to work a bit do you have to still touch on the the yeah. actual commercial kitchen yeah which yeah. places have you worked at i've i've worked few restaurants but again uh, uh, honestly uh, they're not something which i would say i would work there if oh, given an right. opportunity but in melbourne anywhere special besides the mcg in melbourne uh not really so, mcg right, was india good. give me india so what oh. was your favorite place in india i mean uh, obviously the place where i started i worked in marriott marriott huh? uh, mostly yeah so there was my italian restaurant was called rhapsody and rhapsody. i used to work under multiple italian chefs that was that was my favorite if you what, ask me what's your favorite italian dish anything meat Yeah. I love to and obviously a good risotto is a very tricky one I love to cook and eat good risotto What's a good sauce? I'm for, getting hungry now. For for meat? I've been fasting you know this is my second day fast <laughs> I haven't eaten for two days now I'm I'm drooling. That, uh, that's not a good topic uh, then but uh I'm trying to get under 100 My my to go food always is steak. Like, steak? Yeah. It's it's the easiest I love it and I what's, feel What's a good steak? Cuz bodybuilders love steaks or protein. What's a good steak? I, I I actually love steak with a bit of fat. So what what cuts that? So mostly I go for scotch fillet. Scotch fillet. But then I also like pick the ones with a, a bit of, of fat around. Why? It is juicy. I, I, the fat, I just it? love it. Also I've I've once bought wagyu the most premium one I could get, the Japanese branded one. I know if I'm going to a restaurant I can't obviously afford it because the cost price for the steak was around $300 for mm. and no barely 200 grams yeah so that in a restaurant would easily cost me 2000 bucks so wow. i i bought the steak and made it and tried it that was out of the world but not something which you would eat every day so buttery so soft and all those things wow 
The tomahawk's pretty good too. There's a tomahawk steak. But I, <clears throat> that's quite fatty too sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> I cooked it once. I don't know if I did it justice, but I bought it for my son. But um, he loves his steaks. He does... Oh, my God. <laughs> Look, I'm going to, <laughs> let's go back to you because no, I was going to talk about I was going to talk about his fried chicken he did one time. Oh my god! And I didn't even he made the um, he was 15. I had chicken breast in the in the fridge, and he he made this amazing fried chicken. And I ate it. I go, can you make it again for me? He was 15. Um, all right, so you're still in hospitality. You're a lecturer. Um, when did the photography part? When did it shift then? And what would the what was the first moment of your photography? Okay, so. Uh in my life obviously i started with a film camera yashika yep. when i was around like i don't know 13 14 years mm -hmm. which was actually too heavy for me to even lift mm -hmm. so started in those uh, cameras and then eventually moved to digital obviously mm -hmm. and like everyone start with shooting flowers and birds and everything and started shooting food uh, because i was chef and i always used to joke around saying i love to shoot food and not people because food won't talk back. Yeah. I can just place it where I, I want. And until I reached Melbourne, I was only shooting food. One day, uh, I was walking. I always carry camera in my bag. Yeah. I was walking and there was a group of people who was doing a photo walk. So it's basically a bunch of photographers and a bunch of models walking around the city and taking photos. I'm like, what's happening? It's a photo walk. What is a photo walk? They explained me. I'm like, oh, you can jump in and take photos. So that's the first time I actually took, other than my friends and everyone, models photo. I'm like, ah, oh, it's not bad. So I went for the next photo walk with them mm -hmm. and then eventually moved to portraits. Then a bit of boudoir. And when I came here, I was training with my, obviously, trainer and he and his... Bodybuilding. Bodybuilding. And you're ripping up at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about an Indian well, ripping up, mate. I've well, been that's, trying that's to bulk up. That's the reason why I'm in a hoodie yeah no no I can see it's puffed up to the hoodie it's helping you out put a bit of size on you but go on so yeah you had a trainer so you liked you, you had a trainer go on so he he saw my photos and everything he was like can you take my photos so I took his photos then his um, wife's photo uh, maybe I don't know if it's right it's XY's photo she was also a trainer that's it. Yeah, that's right. and took their photo and then the next trainer in the gym approached me and it was like a uh, Steamroll effect. Effect. Yeah, yeah just keep going it happened and then uh after a while i was always on and off because i wanted to keep it as a hobby mm -hmm. i always told that if i get into a pro professional mode i might lose the interest yeah. so that worried me i didn't oh, want to lose okay. the uh, photography interest or mm -hmm. i wanted to keep it as a hobby and Chris, there exactly. was a point where obviously i was not great there was a phase where I was doing bad with my relations and everything. So photography was something which all kept right, me so, out of house. All right. So you were, when you say relationships with a partner. Yeah. And when it wasn't going well, your escape was photography. Yeah. I, obviously, we were not staying together then. And she was away and we were having a rough patch. So I was heavily depressed and all those things. Yeah. Normal. And I knew staying at home is the worst idea for me. I was kind of working out everything what could possibly keep me, you know, up and running. Yeah. So staying out of house was one thing. So I made a website. I started posting more photos and started taking it more seriously. Okay. That is when I would actually say... How long ago was that? I was almost around one and a half, two years back. Yeah, right. So that's when... I actually started doing it professional, I would say, started a website and everything until unless I was shooting, charging money, some like 100, 100 bucks, 200. If you give me, that's all right. If you don't give me, that's fine. I was yeah, I've got off. a question about that. Go on. So that's when everything started getting serious. And also that's when I had to channelize my, you know, all those negative thoughts and everything. I had to keep myself busy. So that was it. Oh, well, since we've tapped on, why why did depression hit you because it sounds like it did what was the what was that what was the what do you think because it's a mindset yes you're a photographer then now or you you went that way but somehow a relationship affected you 
and you said you were training so you were doing a lot of things trying to better yourself what do you think was not the trigger but what do you think triggers you or what was it that you saw going into darkness and you needed to come out so yeah of course after without with because i'll tell you why because sometimes we think again it's a western culture problem but i'm suppose depression is in all cultures both europeans but also asian and india and all that kind of stuff so tell me yeah uh, at least now it's been spoken about good uh depression for at i think everywhere it's there some mm. at least western countries we speak about it other places it's not tagged as depression yes you just walk around like that and you really don't know what to do with that right but in my case obviously when i had a breakdown and everything gym was one part which was keeping me up and running yeah uh, but then i can't stay in gym all the day yeah there's times uh, when i have to be alone at house that's when everything start kicking back in it's so it's true get out eh get yeah. out of that house get out you know i have to get out of the house lately yeah uh i was another good thing which i did at that at least at that phase was i have a nice bar with fancy liquors and everything i said listen i'm not drinking until and unless i get better wow because cuz you would, most people go to the drinking first i i knew if i drink that's it I, i'll be finishing all the bar getting more bottles and i'll be stuck there forever wow so that mm. was bold move honestly it was hard but yeah so these things and obviously i was listening to all the podcast cold plunges cold shower and all those things so you were kind of in a deep place yeah we just i don't want to disregard it you were in a very dark place because you were clutching on everything oh, i was trying You're everything you fucking trying everything, everything man everything. i'm so glad you got out of it and um yeah i think that's the thing i mean the gym getting out of the house you don't want to talk to people but just talk to people and yeah. it nothing happens in 24 hours but if you just persist with it it might take 24 days it but takes it time but takes yeah. time but it gets you out each yeah. inch by inch yeah it's sad to hear that but also i it, it woke me up just now to think even in your culture cuz we i think we believe or maybe i believe that forgive me if i say this but asian culture indian and middle eastern culture it's like that you think they don't have emotions because they're so is it stoic the look they've got a stoic look about them I learned that word from Chris he's trying to become stoic now. So I think we misinterpret though these men and women and we don't really understand that they have feelings like all of us. Yeah, it's 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 tricky because uh we are not sometimes quite comfortable about speaking this because Yeah, we, because you have, I think your culture won't allow it in some ways. These days even before my culture wouldn't allow it. Yeah. It it's changing these days people are upfront speaking about it mm-hmm. uh, obviously when you have celebs and all speaking mm. they trend follows at least uh also i normally tell this to everyone if you are not understanding what other people are speaking about depression you're in a good place you don't understand it because you're not depressed yeah so but then not acknowledging that there's something like this out in world that's not great yeah but how do you how you have to have gone through it to understand it unfortunately it's so hard on the other side we we can jump up and down and tell people you don't understand I'm depressed but that's unfair to them too how do they know but people are cold people care people don't care it's hard to work it out but once you've experienced it it gives you a bit of a bit of empathy yep a bit of compassion but like i said i sometimes i feel like yeah sometimes i don't know they say ignorant ignorant ignorance is bliss but and it is i don't know i think the most important part is um goal setting keep going keep trying things Yeah, it's just talk, about a goal to talk to people, a goal to get to the gym, a goal to eat well, a goal not to drink alcohol, a goal to get a relationship, a goal to take a good photo, a goal to get big arms. Just have goals. Yeah. Like doesn't matter. Have a nice meal, a goal to go get a good pizza. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sit down and have a good pizza by yourself. I mean, there's nothing better with a beer. So, not even a beer. I'm not drinking too much lately. <laughs> so, what is your favorite shot? your a client's pose what's one of your favorite photos like all the time you go oh, I, I, I you always you go to okay. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's kind of tricky when people ask me or even my girlfriend or anyone ask me like i i struggle to pick favorites 
not just photo i don't have a favorite color i don't have a favorite food wow. i don't have a fav- i have a bunch of favorite movies songs mm. photos i that's one of the toughest question for me to answer when someone asks me what is your like being a chef everyone what's your favorite meal to cook i don't know i don't know I if it's a common thing i've heard that yeah I, but I, i get it but wow so there's not like a favorite shot like you think oh, i really like this shot uh, they they're a bunch of photos yeah. and sometimes i also sometimes look at the photo after a few days or things after the edit so sometimes my own perception change i might like one photo really well so i sometimes give it some time and see how it sits mm-hmm. at least in me inside my mind Wow. So one thing I struggle is to tell what my favorites are. Okay. Well, is there their favorite shot? Do your clients always want this shot or that's their favorite shot? That's easy one? to understand yeah, because yeah. whenever I shoot and then I see my photo the photo which I've taken as their profile photo, yeah. I know that's their favorite photo. Hmm. But is there one that's consistent that you go, "Oh, yeah, here we go. That one they liked." Is yeah. it like which one is it usually? Is it uh like what? Is it the one sitting on the bench where they look at the camera like that? So, when it comes to bodybuilding <laughs> photos or fitness photos, the pecs, e- the abs, everyone the... love a back photo, a nice ah, pull up photo. Okay. That's something which I don't miss on any of the shoot. Is that because of the gluteus maximus? Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> it is that. It is that, mate. Like. and uh, yeah that's that's one photo which if you see consistently everyone have got one pull up or back photo i uh, i think everyone i worked could do a pull up at least maybe it's also because you know with our face we always going to judge our face like am i pretty not pretty i should have smiled more up in my eye whatever but when you do a back shot they guess you've taken the face right out of it now and it's a torso uh, I, i've not thought about it that way but yeah it makes sense sometimes uh, and also tricky part about fitness shoot is you have to flex everything also keep your face well and smiling right. that's that's also again maybe i'm jumping out of topic but no no okay. when people ask me why people or clients book me even though they are competing they are buying the stage photo stage photo is different yeah. all together because that's almost like a music concert you yeah. don't have a retake yeah it's a nice day you're giving your best it's a hit and miss sometimes you can't have a second chance there mm. it's the environment and everything but when it's a shoot which is organized you don't like your face you can still take another one but also you're like you said you're tensing they're tensing up the the, the quad with a calf Bit they absolve and they got to and they got and like and then they got to really put on a smile but they got to breathe and go for the core yes. to bring out the flex yes. so it's an intense moment and you kind of got to make it seem seamless it's that's another right. topic which other people don't understand who are not into bodybuilding or not who are not i go to posing classes just to see what's happening wow, okay. and I, i i sometimes write blogs so I've written this I exactly remember if you don't understand what posing is or how difficult it is just try and flex your biceps for 30 seconds you'll know how hard it is 100% no, no. I've, I've, uh, it's also the, to to pose correct to flex correct and to get over any insecurities and then to remember you're smiling yes and and, for, and concentrating and know what you're going to do next like this it, it is quite quite a few things going on yeah also that makes you different as a photographer also mm. that makes you or that sets you apart from a generic photographer mm-hmm. or at least if i compare myself 5 years back that that's the difference what i have now at least mm. i know what's going on there so i won't ask them to hold it up for next 20 extra seconds or something because i know what's happening there at least even though i've not been in stage or anything i understand that struggle mm. so most likely i'm like okay i'll tell you when to flex until then i'll be taking all the test shots and everything set everything and then it's like 10 20 seconds and then easy done how long does a photo shoot usually take uh it totally depends on how much what package they pick, okay. pick but 
it lasts what's at the, least four. What's the smallest? Not, I don't want to add no price. What's the smallest time frame and what's the longest time frame? One hour is the smallest the longest, or shortest, I, which I recommend. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they have to ease up and warm up and everything. Longest I've done even like four hours, four, four and a half hours. hours. All right. I'm just going to stop for a second, just Chris. Yeah. Your your phone's off. Did you need oh, to get yeah. it back on? That should be fine. I mean, it's all for BTS. And oh, is it still filming? I'm pretty sure it is. It is not. Okay, I just wanted to help you out. Oh, yeah, and Chris, if you, you want to take a few photos of us with your cameras, I mean your phone, yeah. just so we can do it tonight, you know, like saying who we had. And I know you know what you're doing, but I can't help being control freak. <laughs> Plus, we're on a topic that you enjoy. I can see you're like, mm, yeah. Mm. All right, yep, let's go for okay. it. You, you're yeah. going to... Um, you, okay. want, you want to put it back on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it, go for it, go for it. Yeah, Chris has got his own camera. He knows what he's doing. Well, we think he does. We've got this far. Okay, good on you, Chris. Yeah, I just thought it was going to be a good for my next segue. So I'll just wait. Are we ready to go? Yep. Chris, we're going? Thank you. Yeah. All right. He'll edit this. Um, have you ever needed to draw the line and say no? I, and and um, don't do this. Photos per se, you've gone like, I don't do this. Have you ever needed to? Yeah, when it comes to editing requests, I've said no. I've also done things which I say no now because there was a point where I was not established or because, where because. I wanted to earn money and then sometimes after the shoot, clients tell, hey, do that. I, I'm, I'm not denying that I've not done it. Yeah, of course. I've done it. Mm. But these days, I... I'm confident enough to say no and mostly with editings I say this is the point I can go and I can't go beyond that mm. so that's okay it. that's fair enough I mean, do you have do you, do you ever get some doozies some questions you think like wow I can't believe where your mind is <laughs> I mean it's it's sometimes uh, very funny because obviously I train these days and I understand how hard is it to maintain a six packs and it's not right when someone asks me, can you Photoshop? If at all, I Photoshop. It's disrespect to all those people who are yeah, struggling. Don't do it, man. And it's not worth yeah. it. It's not, it's not worth it for them or anyone in the long run. We had, a, we had a podcast once here and the girl said, oh, I feel like I was a bit vulnerable when I mentioned past relationships. And I said, I said, me and Chris, we don't remember that. But I said to her, trust us. Trust. Yeah. It'll be okay. And we did and it worked. I guess when you tell them, don't worry, we, won't, we don't need to edit it to, too much and it comes out to be okay. But yeah, I think just keep it real. I think for everyone's sake, I think in the long run, I don't know about you, is it just me? When I look at photos five years ago or 10 years ago, I'm like, I'm not happy with myself. And what, yeah. then, but when I look at them now, I go, God, I was young. My skin looked amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think they don't realize in five years time or 10 years time, I'll look back and go, Oh my God, I did look pretty good at my, you know, so they're quite judgmental for the moment, isn't it? That's that's another reason why sometimes as a photographer, I say you need to take photos time to time, uh, especially if you're competing because you are investing a lot of time, effort, money, yeah. your dedication, dieting, everything. Mm. And then say you're spending like 10, 10 grand or something on you and then you try and not... Yeah. capture yourself in that peak 100% best shape you, you missed it you're not going to walk around like that ever yeah, no, and maybe no. obviously you'll improve over the time but that particular year is gone you don't have anything no no 100% and I think yeah you got to capture it um, let's have a uh, do clients ever choose a pose they want and you think they mentioned it and it's like yeah and no like sometimes they will mention a pose you go alright yeah let's do it or they'll mention a pose you go nah I or don't do you... straight up say no. No. Okay. I when the best way is to show them. So when they say, "Okay, uh, let's do this pose," so I'll always give it a go. I try and see. Okay, maybe because I'm sure that a guy might think he's got a really good double bicep hit. Same in person. Yes. Amazing. But in a photo, you think we're losing something. Can I get you to do something else? Yes. I'm going to get more out of it. So mostly the visual representation makes it easier. So yep. I take a photo of what they have suggested and I say, hey, this is how it looks like. Yep. So they exactly know if it's good or bad. Yep. And then I suggest, okay, maybe let's get a few changes. Or yep. sometimes what I've seen is people are 
a bit uh, what do you say the one shoulder is up or down or something and it is surprising sometimes they haven't realized it up until then mm-hmm. and then i show the photos they correct it for the competition wow. because they never oh, knew what wow. they were doing they so were actually helping like, them out yeah. even to see where they can tweak just yeah. to get that better i mean i'm not expert but i can see you're not a judge but you're judging the photos which yes. is judging the look which is judging the muscle so the judges are doing the same thing in some ways but they can intricate they're a bit more intricate than you yes wow i'm, I'm surprised that that's pretty good uh going by your posts on instagram give us the viewers yeah. now the five male edition of best photos you said there's the five best photos you could take as a male would be and you've got here ben Rose, dips pull-ups rest pose and lateral pull downs why those five and tell us yeah give them a tip what would be the best five are they still the best five uh and why they they are not the bad ones obviously yep. it's not the tricky ones to take so lateral pull down yep uh so do you want me to tell how yeah. what's the tricks uh lateral pull down obviously it it is not very complicated it's about the angle you get mostly i try and do a 45 degree angle and if it's natural light yes or else i get a light again uh, on a 45 degree angle yep. uh only tricky part is when you do a lateral pull down if you going all the way back your lower back gets a bit dark and uh, it is not decreased. captured yeah decreased too, yeah so that's something which you can avoid if there's some extra light the other one is what okay uh, so let's say um bent over rows bent over i bet you any money you got to make sure that you're tensing up your hammies too and your calves yep. no, everyone forgets that one eh Be- bent over rows i Assuming. i mostly ask them to do a dumbbell one obviously dumbbell. because you can ah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, sometimes yeah. rest somewhere and then i can have some uh, things in foreground makes it look more nicer yeah, 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 so okay. sometimes i have the uh, dumbbell rack or something in the foreground which makes it look nicer so that's always bent over rows i think is always been there in my shorts well okay well let's instead of going for more i'm going to go to the gym which i'm not i'm not going to go this afternoon because i'm fasting and i don't want to go if i was going to go to this afternoon which is the one out of the five i should do and give me a tip on it which is the five as a guy which one okay steve do this one as as a guy obviously uh oh, what's the pose called the uh oh, mus- the, the most muscular most muscular that that's a really good one because uh, you can flex your abs yeah yeah there would be a bit of fold in your abs obviously because you are bending right. forward but that's a complete picture such like it you can show off almost everything but if it was going to be the lateral bend over dips pull ups rest pose which one out of those five pull ups pull ups yeah like um, like you mentioned the face okay. not there unless you really want oh, okay the face not there okay well then one I'm thing get... i would yeah. not take not take yeah is bench press why it's so tricky uh i mean imagine you're taking doing a bench press even uh incline or a regular one yeah one you in a very awkward position for a photographer to take unless and until i'm up there wow, on a okay, ladder yeah, or something this is good for everyone to know chris and no bench press no inter- and, not an incline and it's hard to get your face and everything together also i don't think when you're doing a bench press you can really show off your chest also like ah. it, if you, if it's a machine or something you yeah. can hold it and things like that if it's up there bench you're covering press. a lot of things i feel like we've i feel like we've cracked a case here Uh, I, I now still, when I see people doing their bench press photos, I'm going to say, bloody hell. I, I still try it every time. And it's hard to do. Incline, do. I find it a bit more easier. Yeah, of course. Because a flat, you have yeah. a face. But uh, a flat bench press, I find it really tricky. I think it's kind of making it like I'm a photographer. I guess it also gives you that your face is pulled back. Yes. Double chin comes in. <gasps> Jesus Christ, I'm never going to do those ones. Um, give us, well, then there's the five female best, right? Yeah. And uh we've got the mirror. Yeah, that's always there. The seated the stairs. The pool side and the corridor. So, if the girls had to choose one and let's let's make it at the gym because they're I'm assuming they're in their gym clothes yeah. and they're in. But out of all those because there's mirrors at the gym, I guess there's seats at the gym, there's stairs at the gym, 
some gyms have a pool or the corridor of the gym which one would they choose and why they would most likely safely pick a mirror one mirror because your face is visible uh your entire body is visible and you can obviously pose in a way you want whichever part you want to obviously uh enhance you can pick a pose it's tricky for a photographer when we do a mirror shoot that we don't get in the mirror so we have to really find oh, find right angles. yes yes so so mirror so reverse the camera look in there find yourself yeah you need to find a very weird angle ah oh, what angle do you reckon i always go 33 i mostly <laughs> hide honestly i just hide keep my hands like that and oh god all right all right no no all right well there you go we've given a, a tip out there uh the equipment you use is quite expensive and ever enhancing how does one keep up and do people really care about the equipment you've got or is it just you uh any photographer will get a bit annoyed when they say oh your camera is doing a great job Chris bloody is, hell no uh, yeah, <laughs> it's is, it's also hands. us i mean it's us who's operating that yeah, yeah. but like i look at all the cameras we've got here now and, I, and yeah. i know they're great cameras you, you know they're great cameras and i'm like looks like something my dad had back in the 1950s <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, they do play and does it take film go on yeah they do play an important role obviously they do, after they? a while you keep spending more and you build up your gears and everything but initially it's about knowing the camera extracting how much ever you can uh, and then that's when uh see i wouldn't know nothing i'll just zoom blurry and fix that like i've discovered portrait on my phone and i love portrait i think i'm i think i'm as good as you now on portrait i reckon i can take on you and chris just with my um my apple phone which is on portrait I can make Chris look amazing. <laughs> that's that's something which another if someone is uh, looking for a tip never use a portrait mode in a gym if you're trying to show off your muscle because that smoothens everything. It makes smooth. you nicer. <sighs> that's the problem. And good. So that's another tricky part in fitness photography. Don't use portrait. I mean, we have to smoothen the skin a bit, but mm. when you smoothen in the edit, you lose the Uh, wow. cuts and everything right, so, so there's a very fine line so we've got the tip no portrait right because it, it smooths you out you look amazing it's an amazing photo but it's not a detailed photo if, if you're clothed up and if you're just looking for a complete photo mm. with clothes and everything in a gym that's fine if you're trying to show off your muscle no portrait mode okay yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ underexposed overexposed underexposed Under -expose. Under I I play around a bit with underexposed ones because All right, you're I You're going to get into an argument now. It's going to be an argument. <laughs> yeah, that's probably that. That's yours, so, yeah. yeah. So, underexposed <laughs> because uh I kind of sometimes like the dramatic uh, you know, different look, blacks and whites and everything. I play around but that's a bit of arty side. Hmm. If you're really wanting to show off your whole muscle and body and everything, yeah. proper exposed. Well, cash you wondering why we were all shocked. We got cameras going everywhere. <laughs> uh Nathim brand bring his cameras in. So we we're, we're really putting on a show here. Um Yeah, why why did you choose bodybuilding and not other genres? Bodybuilding eventually I reached to bodybuilding. Like I said, uh, my trainer asked me and then also being in gym pretty much 5 to 6 days a day. I understand it and I could connect more and mm -hmm. when I connect more obviously I can get more genuine photos mm -hmm. and also this is a this is a void space for now I think there are it's a very niche category mm -hmm. for now and the health awareness fitness awareness is going higher there's no much photographers who actually mm -hmm. take only fitness photos they are but when you compare to other photography niches fitness photographers is still a very small group well when we did a podcast with john it, when he spoke about the 1980s maybe 90s but 70s 80s and 90s and i'm sure still today the photographer was a key ingredient and it wasn't just your normal photographer there were forensic like um forensic photographers or crime photographers because they could take scenes yes. of a murder scene and they could get the detail so they would hire them to take bodybuilding photos so they, some of these some of these photographers 
were just as skilled as the like meaning to elevate the sport they needed the best to make people fall in love with bodybuilding so it just couldn't be an average photo so and it was also about marketing and the detail and that's what i'm saying the photographers were respected back then john will talk about the photographers like they were adonises themselves yeah i mean there are few uh which i know and look up to uh they are like smashing out there but they are in that elite category obviously everyone dream of reaching somewhere close but uh it's different now mm. also with the ease of cameras and mobile phones and everything mm. there is a bit of a kind of thought that anyone can take photos which is right anyone can take photo but there's always a difference that's why people like me get hired oh, well obviously um it's competitive out there isn't it is everyone trying to get into this space there are a lot of people getting trying to get in now and is that harming it or helping it or what's it doing it it's never harming because uh competition will be there everywhere yeah. and at least with the people i know and have worked together and everything we don't have a negative competition mm-hmm. we speak to each other i was uh, telling chris if i'm booked out i call some of my friend and like hey i've got a booking do you want to take over so mm. we we do that so right, at least for now it's it's good and everywhere there's competition it's about how healthy you maintain it no no i i think competition's good and 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 i think it's not everyone makes it makes it look like it's competition but not everyone makes it and that's the the problem so you train though i don't you yeah what's uh, how long you been training for how many years uh quite a while but for me up until last four years it was always been on and off because i'm very injury prone guy yep so the moment i feel like okay i'm getting somewhere i either have a tear or a mm. sprain or something mm. so i was always on and off also with because of my motorbiking accidents and everything so it's only from past four years i've been do you still ride my box no but you've had a bad accident my box a lot all right we won't go there <laughs> i ride my box but so that would that would hurt you but yeah so i guess you do train yeah you're on and off but it seems like you've always wanted to inject yourself into it regardless of photography you've loved the gym yeah. you've loved the gym i mean uh, that's another thing obviously you been skinny you wanted to look good and when i was growing up gym was not something which was uh, accessible mm-hmm. and also uh, protein and everything honestly if i say until past like before 7 years for me protein powder was uh, steroids mm. i was unaware i was unaware of all those things right and it's only when you get into it you start learning and then i'm like okay this is not something which you can jump in fix your body and jump out it's a lifelong process so from past years i've been on it wow. the only time i take break is that summer one month yeah but That's you it. but the thing is It's not by accident that you're a photographer. You've been in the gym. You like the gym. Yes. Doesn't matter. And you talk about look, it's funny. We talk about fat people wanting to lose weight, but there's skinny people that want to put on weight, yes. the right weight. Everyone wants to lose the right weight and wants to put on the right weight. Yes. So, we forget about the skinny guy. We don't yes. take it as seriously. Oh, come on, man. You're skinny. We all want to be skinny, but it does play a mind. But I've tell you what I've noticed who's who's coming up in the ranks is you guys. Indians, Nepalese, Bang, like Bangla everybody like you boys are in the gym now you are the next wave of tough guys in the gym well we won't call it tough guys but we're talking about the mates the spotting the pushing each other i'm just watching it like i i mean <clears throat> we w- i grew up going with a gym buddy i grew up spotting the gym buddy and people and now i train by myself and i've got no time for anyone Yeah. Just, but you guys are there's the gym buddies now and everyone's turning up at the gym and bro why don't you go to the gym with me and I'll come to the gym with you like like i said mm. again uh, the access to and gym and i'm seeing it on on social media as well yeah. some of the big indian guys or you know the um asian part of things there, there are two things which i realized now that i started going and everything you start realizing what was wrong and what is right right so access was always a thing and 
also it's very expensive to buy the supplements and everything back in india so you yeah it's it's a different story and okay. our food is mostly carb loaded it is so growing up if you're obviously protein deficient you're not you're not going to put on size so have your proper growth yeah no, so no. those things are changing now to an ex- or at least when we migrate to a country where things are easier to access and you have right sources uh for me yeah i mean i always wanted to do it but i couldn't now that i'm here if i'm not doing it that's well look i think there's yeah. protein in every meal it's just finding it I guess maybe you guys were complacent in your food, which is same as Greek food. We can all be complacent, but there's so much protein in all foods, Greek foods and and adding like even I'm what I'm trying to say to you is I know I'm going to sound humorous now with the butter chicken. Well, I guess chicken's got um protein in it, but I guess you can make a sauce better and look at from the cream part or whatever you're going to do and the rice is good. So it, actually butter chicken's a healthy meal. Yeah, but but then- we but we can make it even healthier. And sorry yeah you can sorry light it up. sorry yeah. to interrupt no, sorry no, go ahead yeah the only thing is butter chicken normally if you're having if in a family meal that's cooked once in a week or something yeah. you, if it's like from me yeah. being someone from kerala that's yeah. my state our main food is vegetables rice vegetable rice and vegetable yeah, rice of course, of course. and you have like fish or chicken once in a week which is well let me tell you when europeans when i grew up and even when i grew up here in australia meat was expensive Yeah. And we did vegetables because we grew it in the backyard. So I guess I understand. Uh, look, your culture is very similar to ours. Yeah. The wave. When Europeans came here, they were the kitchen hands and then the shops. Then the Asians came, they were the chicken, they were the kitchen hands and they owned the shops. And now the Indians are coming through, they're the kitchen hands and now they own the shops. And it just yeah. seems the progression into the gyms, into the property finance money status social media leaning on a lamborghini <laughs> you know yeah, what i mean it's 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 uh, what do you call uh, i forgot i teach this thing i shouldn't be forgetting but the hierarchy of needs right so yeah. you get the food right your shelter right and then you get your esteem needs of proper health and other stuff so. <coughs> yeah yeah I, I, like i said it's just i i see i see the momentum and i tell people If you're going to worry and know what the competition is right now look at do you call yourselves Asians are you Asian geographically yes right. i realized i'm i'm not in the i mean when we just say here Asian, when when you say asian until i reached australia i thought i'm asian because yeah. asian continent right yeah. but then here asian term is used for asian countries like china japan that yeah, belt yeah, yeah. and we are called as south southeast southeast southwest stations southeast is in culture southeast in southeast well let me tell you southeast in culture is the threat right now not the threat in a good threat <laughs> i think if i'm going to be competitive against anyone it's you guys <laughs> you want us to know your opponent you know what i mean and i think yeah. the, these guys if they're going to get bigger work harder own the things own shops own properties body wise conscious wise mentally wise probably get a lot of them on podcast maybe that's what we're going to do get to understand what they're doing because they still got the work hard ethic and i think people don't understand the trenches it, it's no also one because uh, i think i came in australia by when i was 32 mm. and i'm uh, not 32 maybe probably around the 30s it's been 6 years so i have to start or i had to start mm. everything from scratch mm. like almost zero so mm. you start by obviously working hard mm. so i think it just stick to it for good long time mm. at least for the initial good 10 15 years it's um it's incredible how do you and i know with chris as well and um i'll i'll kind of mention the struggles on not giving away so much free stuff i feel like it's, it gets abused Exactly. We got it. Like everyone like I uh, I don't want anything free. But I feel like everyone wants it for free. Yes. And I said to Chris once as well, you know what free plus free equals? Zero. There's no there's no transactional finish here. How do you police yourself to just not be coaxed into this free stuff because you guys have had to do that. Yes. I'm you know, I'm 
I just feel like it needs to stop sometimes. That people should pay. Yes. Yeah. So initially, when I started, almost all the photographers would have done something called collab or collaboration. Uh, I've done it. I still do it, but I do it when. i have to or i want to try something and it benefits me and the other person equally mm. no, okay, if yes. it's not happening i say no to it now but there were a time like uh you have to have some portfolio or things like that you contact someone yeah 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 and i'm not talking about bodybuilding bodybuilding people industry uh, i mean people from industry have been really good, good. this is a very honest uh, uh thing if anyone i've contacted they say yeah let's shoot i've never heard a no from anyone even mm. when i was very new to this but in other parts or other glamour section and everything when i contact someone they are like oh, okay let's do this everything is as per their term so it's almost like they would pick the photos they would do they would do the after shoot things they would tell me which i can post and not and i've spent x amount of hours editing and everything and once everything is done they're like ah oh, i don't like this photo i don't want that so that's a waste of mm. money time and effort and everything and that collab thing is misused now the whole point is collaboration means x and y well i think yeah. no one understands collaboration and when i we look at people that are big like yes. mr beast yes and even sebum I have listened to the podcast and listened to these guys they talk about collabs mates working together for the greater good and yes, to do business exactly but everybody just wants to take and do no business which is crazy i guess if you're going to do something and you 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 want to offer something do it in a way to respect the monetization of it in yes. some ways for for the greater good for to buy better cameras better equipment better exactly. whatever you know what i mean Yeah I that's mean what, that's a word misused these days especially because lot. of uh Instagram and other stuff. Yeah, it seems um what's the do's and don'ts you see people taking photos or like don't do this guys and do this. Well you're watching it, you're seeing people filters. Filters what what is it? Uh using filters oh, like don't do it. Which I mean I'm not opposed to using filters sometimes it makes your job easier when you're shooting by yourself and you don't know much what to do but then not to a point where it makes you look like a different person like you oh my god i've seen yeah. people they're wearing sunglasses and you can still see that they got eyelashes because the camera's just wanting to push eyelashes on them you know what i mean have you seen that yeah yeah e- even they're wearing sunnies and you can see inside the past the sunnies and just see eyelashes it's I, it's funny i mean uh, like we were speaking if i post a photo it look it should look like me in real life yes. than uh, you post a really good photo with eight packs ten packs whatever and then next day you rock up to the gym with a uh, tummy oh that's i tell you, that's why i tell people i'm better looking in real life i'm not really good looking in real life eh how good looking am i um but the do's and don'ts is don't use filters avoid avoid to, avoid i mean don't use those kind of filters which would make you look different than so what So maybe you use a filter that changes the lighting in a way is that right Something which enhance the photo not manipulate the photo And that manipulates so that's the don't do and the do is this is actually sorry this actually <laughs> one more what? don't what which every photographer say please don't put any kind of filters on the photos we have edited and given you <gasps> Yeah. That's the worst. Really crazy. Yeah. yeah, don't touch the photos. We have worked hours on it and we have Don't tell me they touch them. Yeah. <sighs> they yeah. touch them. Yeah. Oh my god. So it's like getting a makeup artist and the person's put all the makeup on, you've paid th- thousands of dollars. Yes. They've used the best foundation, eyeliner and you've gone to the room and grabbed your foundation to put more on. Yes. And you've gone and done your darker eyelashes and Yeah. No. Exactly. I did not know that. I did not know that edit what you guys have done. <laughs> That's a very common thing. Don't edit the photographer's edits. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't double edit. Yeah. Oh my god. What about any tips for beginners that they can upscale their photos on their mobile phone? 
Like I saw Chris once. We went to a show and Chris showed me if I put my finger, I move it. I can darken it a little bit or yes. change the contrast. Any tips for us uh, mobile there, phone There are uh, heaps of tips. Honestly. Give us one. Yeah. Give us one. So I'm about to take a photo of you. What would I do? Like I'm holding the camera now. Try different angles. Right. Try multiple poses, ways. Don't think too much, honestly. Do I honestly. change the contrast? Yeah. I mean, with is darker better or light better? It totally depends on what you want. I would I wouldn't yeah. get to the technical Tell us why. side. <laughs> no, I love it. I, yeah, I wouldn't get to the technical side, but what you can do to improve obviously is especially with bodybuilding, try different angles and like you said, try different lights. Yeah. So I found the bodybuilding show when we darkened it up, just contrasted it a bit more darker, took away a light. It just pushed the bodybuilders out. That Contrast is always Chris good. Chris photo looked amazing until I learned how to do it and then mine looked amazing. Contrast always <laughs> is good. Mm -hmm. It uh, brings out the shadows and lights, makes your muscle pop more. But also if you grow or slide past a limit, it might look very artificial. Mm. So <sighs> it's a fine line. Well, don't edit, don't edit all these things. All right, you train. We're going to go over the body now. So people are going to look at you and say, I know how to get bigger now. Get nice to have a hoodie and I'm not wearing anything else. <laughs> you're lucky. Just, I mean, he's, you're cutting. Cutting up on what... You know what you're cutting? You know when someone edit the filters that filtered? You're cutting on cutting on what? You're cutting on top of a cutting body. Yeah. A cut body. Exactly. It's the same thing as, as editing an edited photo. So anyway, mm. let's, uh, let's go with um, um, the, the questions here. Um, I just need some space. I just need some space. Space. I just need some space. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna tell you a body part. If you train it, great. If you don't, you're not a personal trainer. Let's just make it clear. He is not a personal trainer yeah. here, and he's not a doctor. Yeah, he's not any medical advice. And actually, when experts have nothing. But he can teach you to cook a bit better. Um, so tell me reps and sets. Okay. All right. So like like I said, if I again I keep telling people a bite if uh, chest if I was going to say a chest exercise, I might say incline dumbbells. Um, you have three taken, sets. You've taken my answer. Fifteen to eight. No, no, no. You can say it. <laughs> yeah. You can say it. But let's go traps. You train traps. Uh, yeah. Oh, good. So, You're the only one. Me and you. Me and you train traps. But trap. Traps or anything to do with shoulders was something I started off with hate and now I love it okay. because that shoulders makes you look a bit different. Yeah, you need big shoulders. But so traps? Traps, it's... I mostly do the one thing I hate and love is Arnold Press. and Which one? Arnold Press. What's that? Arnold Press. Yeah. Is that good for traps? No, we're talking about traps this era. Ah. Traps is mostly shrugs. the shrugs, shrugs yeah. but uh, I, I don't I don't find the shrugs really hitting me there always. I try and do it properly, but I struggle with shrugs. All right, so you, let's say you don't do them, yeah. but you do the Arnold press, yes, and that's for your delts. Delts, yeah. How many sets? How many reps? So mostly it's twelve reps, three Arnold sets. Press, shoulder yeah. press. Yeah. Three sets. Three sets, twelve reps. Twelve reps. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go rear, front, side delts. I'll yeah. just go with one delt exercise. Chest. Chest, uh, my absolute best is always the machine incline. Seated, McLean? Seated, Seated, incline press. Okay, how many sets? Uh, I love six, but go really, not as heavy as you guys, but six. go try and be heavy. Mostly it's three sets, but try and go max. S six reps. Six reps. Wow, that's you're really trying to go heavy. So you want to bulk up. What about um, back? Back is always the pull-ups. Pull-ups? Yeah. Sets? Uh, I do it till failure. Mostly, so... All right, so the reps are failure. Sets? Three sets? Four sets? Two sets? Uh, four, mostly three. it's four. Four till failure? Yeah. Wow. What number you reckon is your failure? 20? 18? So... Or do you go heavy? With, with do this, you like heavy? I'm just going to ask you, do you like heavy? Because at the I, moment, I don't I, like heavy. I, I like heavy, but obviously... I've got a lot of injuries and I'm a bit scared most of the time. So I want someone at least balancing my dumbbells or something when I go heavy. And for, for me, obviously, heavy is like 
for me, if bench press heavy is max is 25 or 27. I know, I know. It's because... Um, I mean, not bench press, sorry. because you're ripping. <laughs> no, <laughs> dumb, no, but dumb, you're, it's, yeah. it's body weight. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a balance. So you do um, back, pull down, chest is the seated. Um, failure was the back, obviously. Yeah. Bicep? Bicep, uh, the curls, obviously. Bar, bar I, or dumbbells? So I, obviously I follow my trainer's program, but I love uh, hammer curls. Hammer curls, with, uh, yeah. Dumbbells, and then uh, obviously the bar curls. Sets? Uh, it's mostly three or four. And reps? Twelve. Twelve, okay. Tricep, same thing. What's your favorite triceps? triceps? Uh, it's I, I like skull crushers. Skull crushers. I, I still find it a bit difficult with my elbows when uh -huh. I do skull crushers. Yes, so mostly yes. it's like 15. 15 uh, reps, how many sets? 15 kgs. The 15 kg, yep. yeah. And uh, it's again, yeah, three to four reps. Sorry, three to four sets. Mostly it's 12 reps. 12 reps, okay. I'm repeating it because sometimes we'll break up the podcast yeah. into socials and it will allow people to... Um, abs? I hate doing apps, but I've started doing it for summer. Yes. Uh, I've I've always had the top two apps, but I've never had anything below that. Okay. I struggle to get rid of that fat. So what are you doing for the lower then? If uh, you, that's what you want to get rid of. Uh, I do the... Leg raises? Leg raises. Mm -hmm. I do... I, I just do six to ten minutes. Mostly I do in... Uh, uh, a bit of know, everything? A bit of everything. Mix it up. Do you do... if you Let's say you do leg raises. If I do leg raises, I do three sets of 20. Is that what you do? Yeah, 20 is mostly my standard. Yeah. Sets the same, about three? Uh, mostly three or four, but for most of the abs, my reps are 20 to 25. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I try to do that too. Um, quads. Just an exercise you like or recommend? Quads, uh, squat or leg press. Leg press? Ha I've recently started liking hack squats. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm back to hack squats at the yeah. moment. I think... It, but it's a bit of a safety place. It doesn't. You can get low without feeling like you're going to buckle. I used to be really scared, and also I never liked hack squat for some reason. Yeah. I was always scared that I might slip off, yes. or something like that. Oh. But uh, these days, I've been in a love hate relationship with. <laughs> so sets. Uh, I, the max I've gone is forty kg. So 2020 plates. So 2020 sets, what, three, two, four? It, it's mostly four, four sets, 12, 12 reps. 12 reps, okay, okay. Uh, hammies? Hammies is uh, laying curls, Leg hamstring curls. curls. Standing so or lying down? Or lying seat, down. Lying I, down. Don't, I don't have a standing one yeah, okay. in my gym. Okay. So it's mostly lying. And this one I go 20 reps. 20 reps, yeah. okay. And three sets, sets, three? It, there's a funny story for yeah. hammies because... Uh, you know, sometimes you do these legs and you feel that they're popping where yeah. they're actually not popping. Yeah. So I asked my girlfriend, can you see my hammies? She's like, no, I can't. <laughs> and we went for no, a rugby isn't. match that evening and then she pointed out some play and you know what? That's a hammy. Oh, Looks like a hammy. Oh, like, gosh, ah. she threw salt on the wound as <laughs> yeah. well. So that's yeah. something I religiously do. Like, right, you, try bet, and you try. better get it back. You better try them hard, mate. And you know what? Keep yourself in a tracksuit and when summer comes... And you go to the beach and you take off your tracksuit. She goes, oh, when did those hammies come? I've got skinny calves. Oh, oh my God, the calves. I was going to say next. Calves? Calves, I uh, do seated and also standing. I try and uh, do the variant, mm. uh, like straight legs. and but Sets? My, my reps? Team, How many reps? Uh, calves, mostly I do to failure. Failure, yeah. I Most, try to, mostly three or four. Yeah, I try, I, I try and mix up everything. The stance. You know what I've heard? I've heard, um, I've heard relaxing back. Yeah, I've started doing it, like holding all, all yeah, the way down. Yeah, that's better than holding it up. Holding it up's good. Yeah. Pushing back. I, I've started doing that, but also another thing which is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey, yeah. Oh my God, that's how you know each other. Yeah. This is all going live. Oh, it's so exciting. It's nice. Hi, nice I mean, you. Oh my God, look at you. Come and take a seat over here on our beautiful lounge. All right. Oh, the toilet's there, by the way. Oh, yeah. This is all live and we're doing it with the podcast. It's all right. Well, typical you. Typical you. Typical you. It's, it's a small world. Yeah, we didn't expect less. Can be on the podcast? We probably can, so go for your life. <laughs> um, glutes? Uh, glutes, I think, obviously, with the lunges and everything, it hits. I don't do anything specific. I right. think all the leg workouts eventually will hit there in some part. 
Oh, I so see. Don't do glutes. Okay. Uh, tibialis. That's the front. I'm just. I'm, I'm trying to be very technical. Well, what's a smart. tibialis? That's the front of your calves. The front uh, section. Yeah. yeah. So I do that. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I lean against the wall and do the uh, thing. I don't know. Lean against the wall. So I lean against the wall like this and yeah. be on my heels and then lift my yeah, toe yeah, and yeah. hold that, it. That that is tibialis. Yeah, that that's what I do okay. because I heard someone saying it's good for knees. My both knees are fucked. So. Oh my god! Well, you've had a lot of motorbike accidents, which we don't want to talk about. Um, <laughs> Well, it's time for you to promote yourself. So how about you tell us your website, any thank yous and who you affiliate with sometimes. Go for it. Uh, <clears throat> so obviously um, my website or my business is known as Jim and Glamour Photography. Jim and Glamour. Website is jimandglamourphotography.com.au. In Instagram, I'm named as nitin.is.shooting. Yes. It used to be nitin.chef. Yep. I changed it to Nitin Dot is shooting. Yes. Now I've reached to a point where I can't change the name because that's what I'm associated yep. to. Uh, <clears throat> thanks to, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> should I should I borrow the uh, Snoop Dogg's dialogue? Like, thanks to me for working hard. Yeah, on that. yeah. Thanks to you. <laughs> but, Good, yes. But uh, thanks to anyone and everyone who have booked me and worked with me, honestly, mm. and uh, obviously my trainer. Yep. Aryan, that's his name. Oh, you trainer, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. he's the one who booked me first okay. and paid me first. So thanks to him. Thanks to him. Yeah. Hopefully he gets you buffed and you yeah. have to rely on a hoodie. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you for joining us on thank the podcast. You. Uh pleasure. I mean Thank you so much. First podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.